music, and French press with class, sass, and style. Gia, Tanya, and Sarita are my morning coffee. Good morning, happy Monday, and welcome back to another episode of My Morning Coffee, where the conversation will always be hot, bold, and full of flavor. So let's go ahead and jump right into it and see what everybody's been up to, what is in your cup this morning, and uh, what's going on with you, Miss Gia? Good morning, everyone. I've missed you guys. I hope you've missed us. Um, What's in my cup? I just had some coffee this morning because I need a little pick-me-up. I've been, you know, tired um, lately. Uh, what have I been doing? It's been a minute since we've been together up here on this. Um, we had a little beer event. This, yeah, we had a beer event. Let me see. I haven't really been doing anything community wise like normally. I've been doing. I did a few family things since the last time we were up here. I went to um went to a 50th birthday party for our fraternity brother Sydney. Yeah. Oh, he had a party. Yeah. Shout out to Sydney Jackson, the Phi Beta Sigma chapter. Happy so belated. celebrated his birthday with him and his family, and you know um our frat and you know Star Wars. That was fun and. Then um, what else did I do uh, since we've been um, here last? Did that, and of course we had see it goes to show you I haven't yeah. done much. <laughs> we had our. You've beer been fest. making some cool things. Yeah, I, you know I've been, been in, in your the, space. I've been in, the, in my space trying to get some stuff together. But you know when you're creative, sometimes you you know you have blockage and you just don't feel it, and mm-hmm. you know and then some days you feel it, and then. I've been feeling it when I've been on been on my first job, been in my first job. When so you can't actually you know, do I it. can't actually do anything. So uh-huh. I've been, you know, and I, I was like, what the hell? This first job is getting in the way of my second job. Which so, has yeah. been, you have consistently said this. Yeah, so um, I've been feeling it, you know, the creativity while I'm on my first job. But I've been really good staying focused on my first job. And, um, <laughs> so, I yeah, feel but, like you just had to say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, you know, just in case. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> But no, um, that's all. I just been kind of laying low. Anything um, uh, interesting going on in your first job? Oh, mm. well, mm. you know, there's a lot of stuff interesting going on in my first job, and you're probably referring to what's been in the media lately. A little bit, the allegedly stuff, you know. Um, and um, Rem- so, remind the people where you work and what's going on in the media in in comparison <laughs> to what you can share with us. Okay, well, you know, people. Well, this is for the people. I'm um, I'm a L.A. County. Sheriff Lieutenant. I've been working for the LA County Sheriff's Department for 29 years. So um, that's what I do. And um, I fight crime by day and create by night. But uh, yeah, so there's been some stuff in the media about what's been going on with the Sheriff's Department with uh, in relations to um, the Kobe Bryant um, helicopter crash. And so a lot of stuff has been coming out and, um, you know, allegedly that, uh, Members of the department leaked um, some pictures from the crime scene and things like that. So I know that's been big. So I'm sure um, our sheriff will be busy um, <laughs> dealing with that. And um, last I heard that, I guess we're um, there. Our department's looking into it. So uh, we just have to wait and see. All right. Yeah. Um, I don't really know because I'm not at that patrol station, so I don't have any insight. So don't call me, hit me up on the text or nothing on the DM. <laughs> Anything like that. I don't have no inside scoop or nothing. I, hey, I, I'm far removed from that that part of it. But um, but yeah. How do those things? How are those things usually handled? Even if it wasn't a celebrity, like, is there a level of uh, human dignity that's supposed to be applied to these types of things, or is it what, free for all with what, the phones and the pictures? Well, no, um, no, it should be some some dignity in whatever we what it, what, what we all do, and no no one should be uh, on any kind of scene. Um, Taking pictures, uh, if especially if it's not in the capacity of their job, they have people that come out. We have crime scene people that come out and do that to photographers yeah. to you know to, to, so they can recreate what what the crime um, was and things like that. So know that um, people shouldn't do that. Um, and if someone did that, you know, shame on them because you should respect the family, even if it wasn't a celebrity. You should always respect the privacy of of you know the victims and the victims' family and stuff. But then too, you know, the media, the media takes things and blows out of proportion. So we don't really know what happened. We will have to wait and see what 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 comes to this because you know how it, it always is. I might tell you something, and by the time it gets around the corner, it's totally different than what I originally said So or did. So, you know, we just have to let it play out and, and you know, see what happens. All right. So what's in your cup this morning? 
Um, I have some coffee in this one cup, my coffee mug, my morning coffee mug. Isn't it so cute, y'all? Yeah, I got coffee in there. And then in my um water bottle, because we also have water bottles that you can purchase. I have um some water and um some um I've been mixing my water with some apple cider vinegar. So oh. you know Oh, you're you know, drinking that too? Well, yeah, I've been drinking. You know, I'm trying. You know, I'm trying to. I'm trying to do my part, um, and especially now. This is March. I I told myself I didn't tell you guys, but I've been talking to myself. So um, as I, crazy people yeah, do, the crazy people do. You know, this March is here, so I have to get with us. I got to get back into a routine of you know being healthy mm. and working out. So I got to start. So March is my month. So I got to get some steps in, get moving, and everything. So no, I'm not going to be uh, waking up at old dark thirty in the morning coming out <laughs> to. Um, the beach to meet you. No, that's not going to happen. At least not now, because I still got to go to my first job. Mm. Um, well, now. So, um, so yes, yeah, so don't even try to hit me up on the DM oh. or on the text oh. in the morning. Tell my girl, you're going to meet me. <laughs> you and route to the beach. No, I'm just trying to support your <laughs> mental and physical health, but okay. I'll let that yeah. go. Yeah. Miss Sarita, what have you been up to and what is in your cup? Um, today in my cup is just water. Um, what? No, you usually no, just fancy. I know, no, fancy no, liquid no, libations. No liquid libation except for high quality H two O. No, no mm. green nothing. No. You know, I'm not I'm today. Shocked. I am too. Wow, I know, right? It's okay. it's so simple. Yeah. I know. It could all be so simple. Okay. Um. So yeah, just water. Uh. It's been a crazy rough mm, month. I guess since the last time we. We met up. Um, there's a lot that's happened. Um, a lot of, um, I don't, I, I, for the people who have been watching us for the past year, I take care of my grandparents. Well, no longer my grandparents, but my now my grandfather. Um, so he has been in the hospital for three weeks. Okay. Um, so that has been really difficult. Um, and he's been going back and forth into ICU. Um, so I really think that we should. Uh, consider having a conversation about caregiving because mm -hmm. you have been yeah, a caregiver. Yeah. You are a caregiver to yes. your mother and, you know, just what the toll that it takes mm -hmm. and how, um, you know, we were having a conversation yesterday, how sometimes you don't feel like your life is your own um, yeah. because of the level of responsibilities <laughs> that um, you have to have. Yeah. Yes. I heard you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. That was heard. Yeah. Um, so, Understanding that and all that comes with a, a parent or a grandparent or whomever that is getting older. And so some of their decision making skills aren't what they used to be or so it's just a lot that happens. Um, so that's that's been going on. And then my grandfather uh, in New York is also currently transitioning. So I have both of my grandparents on each coast um, who are not doing well. But um, so hopefully I'll get him stabled out here and then I'll fly to New York um, to say my goodbyes to my grandfather. Um, so that hasn't been fun. That's been kind of the month. Um, I, as we were going to talk about the, um, our event, uh, that was really a good time and a lot of fun. Um, and then have I really been doing a whole lot? I don't feel like I have, but I'm always doing something. I did go uh, to an event last Saturday, which um, I'm also because I'm the hippity dippity one on uh, uh, amongst the three of us. What is hippity dippity? Um, well, you know, I do things like drink green juice and do yoga, do yoga. yoga and, oh, so you like the hip one. No, no hippie. just hippie. hippie. So like the unsalted sunflower seeds and Birkenstocks. You know, I probably don't wear a bra, bra most of the time. So, uh, you probably don't wear panties either then. Uh-uh. Huh? Oh, okay. No. Well, that, hey. You know. <laughs> be free. I like to be free. <laughs> My hair is free. That's why she My... did so well when she lived in the Bay. Yes. Yeah. She, she was, was free. Yeah, she I was just like, hey. It was, it was just her me. Space. It was. Okay. She was in her element. I was. Okay. Well, we got to make an element here for you like that then. Yeah. Well, Let's yeah, do it. Yeah. I'm I'm all for it because I I would really like to reconnect. With that, that yeah, part. that's what I plan to do when I retire. So I'm gonna wear know, no bra and panties. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Yeah. okay, yeah. Um, so I'm really big into crystals and um, the realm of um the universe and okay. um 
Mercury being in retrograde, which it is right now. Your so, chakras and yeah, astrology. You know, my five chakras and my heart chakra right now is a little disjointed. And so doing things to open them up. Yeah. So um, there, my the crystal store that I go to to get all my crystals had their two year um, birthday. So, oh, okay. um, and I, since I've had so much going on in my life, I've been carrying around my mm. Argonite egg. Um, which is no, it's not a uni, a yoni egg for those who. It's pretty. Thank you. Is that and, what you ran off to last weekend after our event? Uh, no, I oh, okay. ran off to another event after our event. Um, you have to let us know. Tell me more about the crystal place because you know I like crystals and a lot, oh. of, the, a lot of jewelry I make. I, I use stones, you know. So yeah, um, she has some very nice yeah, natural so stone natural jewelry. Stone, okay. So, um, yeah, you know. Maybe we can take a field trip. Yeah. Um, so this one is ba- balancing energy fields in this argonite. Something. Okay. And I have a stone that I'd like for you to make something with, but we'll talk offline. Okay. Um, but this is a clearing, um, a, a clearing and cleansing egg. And for me, it's just really good to fill it in. It's like my transitional object. So um, that's been really helpful. Oh, wow. um, I also, speaking of running off to the event, uh, I went to see Marcus Miller in concert. And that okay, was that's a what, whole okay. lot of fun. I am a huge fan of Marcus Miller. If you don't know who he is, Google him um, because he's probably playing the bass lines in some of your uh, favorite R&B um, records. Uh, so that was really cool. He's not on no trap stuff. Mm, I mean, he's getting there. He's getting there. He's getting there. Um, but not quite. Trap. Marcus, if you're listening, you know, we need you to yeah. start. Yeah. Marcus, if you're listening, you know. Make I'm, some I'm, trap. I'm the oldest one here, but I do like. She likes shaking her hands. That trap, you know. So hey, you know, get on a track or two. All right. And and there it goes. Um, so <laughs> you know where. Last but not least, yes, no, not yesterday, Saturday. I went to Oprah's twenty twenty vision. Oh, you went. Oh, you went. Okay. I went. You oh, saw her fall. I. <laughs> I did see her fall. Did you help her up? I did not help her up. You weren't but close I'm, enough to. But if you were, you would have helped her. Probably not. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Okay. Probably not. There is a, a few. And yeah, it was a very interesting space to occupy because I don't think I was the target audience because I didn't realize that it was. Who was oh, the target audience? I'm interested. I believe that the target audience was a person of a particular age that needs support with their weight and um, is not familiar with movement. So she's speaking of the, you know, my age group. That's what she's trying to be nice about it. But so old fat people, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, not so. quite. Yeah, maybe, is that what you're saying? Maybe, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Fifty and above, you saying? So for people that paid over a hundred bucks to see Oprah, she was talking to old. She it was a people. it was a commercial about for Weight, Weight Watchers, Watchers okay. which I didn't realize because, and it was womp, womp. people who maybe don't do a lot of movement. So she was like, "Get in your body," and I'm like. So I'm was, on my mat every day. Okay, so she so, didn't drop her usual Oprah nuggets on on y'all. It didn't feel nug. I I, I did. I wasn't filled with nuggets. When you I left, left with what? And then oh, there was the J Lo aspect, right? What was that about? <sighs> okay, so listen, I I you're not gonna have oh, Oprah come tell. because you know Oprah hears everything. Well, so, look, so what you afraid of Oprah? You afraid of? I am afraid. I am afraid of Oprah. Yes, and stuff. Yes, I am. Look, look, where you from? The truth well, is yeah, the truth. truth. That's what I'm but saying. But she ain't trying to hear but the listen, truth. listen, as a patron, it's important for her Oprah to understand. Oprah ain't trying to hear the truth. Okay, well, then she I want to know. She wants case. to know that she is fabulous. That's great. And don't go up against her or your life will be ruined. Oh. Ask. Okay. Anybody. I would still like to know okay. who need, who would benefit from buying that ticket and what you left with. Did you leave okay. with anything? Okay, so. And the J-Lo effect. You got to. Okay, so the J-Lo effect, I was confused. However, I do understand that J-Lo has now tapped into a new market of what 50 could look like. So now oh, that she's 50, 50. So we could aspire to be J-Lo. Yes. If we do some of the things that J-Lo. You doing, too could be, be swinging like, around right, a pole. If we had J-Lo money and all that. You too can be but swinging so around a pole. for us that don't got J-Lo money and... Um, so basically, if you're not we fat just kinda... or have fitness issues, you got nothing out of it. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. It's good and to if know. You, no, if you wasn't uh, a senior person either, because she talked old about and fat. Old, old, old. Yeah. yeah. 50 plus in fat. 
Yeah, it feels like it was, but that's a huge Womp market. Womp. But that's a huge market. That's fine, but say that. But why would you say that when you're trying to fill the form up and it holds? Yeah, because then you 14, have people, people that leave unsatisfied, and you left without what you went. Because you probably went there to get some Oprah nuggets. I'm sure when you bought your ticket, you were about you're Oprah an entrepreneur. Nuggets. You right. are always looking to be enlightened and educated and. And you Howard, didn't, you didn't want to, you didn't go there to and see about left. Weight Watchers, about moving. No, I, I don't blame you because I would have been a little bit mad too if that's what it was. Because right. I can see the commercial, I watch the commercial, so I don't need to come here need and pay you all this money. Commercial. You know, um, okay, for okay. you to tell me that, tell me something I already know. Yeah, how, how and, about and, that? That, and that's how I thought. I was like, <laughs> oh, because I'm on my mat, you know, four or five times a week. This wasn't for me. Yeah. It just wasn't for me. But for those who are not yeah. on their mat, right? You know, like me. Right. I'm if gonna, you I are guess, not moving, oh, moving. Okay, so I need and to get you a mat too. you want to count points, but and... you don't consider yourself old. No, I no. don't consider myself no old. You know? And you listen to trap music. And I listen to trap music, and I, I you know, and I, I have a mat or two. Um, and I learned that <laughs> Oprah does not care that she is not nice. Oh, oh wow! Good to know. Good to know. Yeah, okay. it, it was. It was a very enlightening. Like time. you learned a lot about her. I learned a lot about her. Not so much yourself. Yes. So was anybody else on stage with her? Was just her? Did she have somebody, you know, moderate this thing? Or? She was the moderator. So she's, oh, and by the way, for anyone that may be going to the Denver one, she also, it's, which I didn't realize, it's a eight hour day. So it started at nine and went from nine to five. Oh. What did you do in eight hours? No, the I Denver one's going to be eight hours. No. Oh, you guys, no, it, was eight was, it was eight hours. So y'all, she talked to y'all for eight hours all day. She, we got out at four. <laughs> Did y'all get a break? A bathroom we got a, we break? Got a, we got a Did break. Because she know people fifty and old got to go to the bathroom a lot. Panera fed us. Okay. Um, which was I was okay. grateful. Okay. Um, but she got there late because she was in traffic, and she was like, "I knew that they weren't going to start without me." So, ooh, I learned a lot okay. about. So Oprah. no workshops or okay. nothing. I listened to Oprah first. No free day. stuff besides Panera lunch? Uh, I got a Weight Watchers voucher. A Weight Watchers I'm voucher. Done. Okay. So what? no no little pen that oh, says. Oh, no, I got a pen that writes okay. lovely. It's a Okay, lovely, a writing pen, but yes, no like pen to journal. put on your denim jacket or anything like that? No. No, no kind of apparel, nothing like that? No, Nothing. you needed to buy that. Oh, wow. Okay. She so I, have, I, have, shirts I saw and hats a lot of people that I know that went. You yeah. Know, they were posting. And, yeah. Yeah, oh there was, it was 14,000 people there. Okay. There was a lot. Wow. Yeah. Bless your heart. Okay. So, yeah, seven hours. So what hours. else have you been up to? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was enough. Yeah. That was it. That yeah. was enough. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that that's all I got. Oh, got, okay. coronavirus. I think we should probably talk about that because mm. I... I don't want to talk about it. You don't okay. want to talk about it? Well, what, okay. what are you... What's going on with you, Miss right. uh, McKenzie? Nothing. First, I want to say, happy Women's History Month. Yay! <laughs> That's right. right. I got my shirt on, you know. Um, we'll be celebrating. Hopefully, y'all also will be celebrating um, the wonderful things that women have done for this country. Yes. Mm. Uh, absolutely. Because we're amazing. And the things we continue to do for this country. We're right. amazing. Yeah. And I posted about this, but I didn't get a chance to see if you guys had a chance to watch the Gabriel Fernandez uh, documentary on Netflix. No, I saw your post and I saw some comments, I think, on your thread. And when I saw the comments and then I have a friend, I have some friends that work for the Department of um, Children and Family Services. Also, we have some sorority sisters that work for the yes. you know, Department of Children and Family Services. And I saw their posts and um, little comments on their on their thread. So I was kind of like, huh. Eh. Do I want to watch it right now? Do I want to wait? And you know, are you familiar with the story? Yeah, this is the 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 kid that um, um died in the died in the care, in care of yeah. yeah yeah so of his mother though yeah yeah and I know I'm very familiar because yeah. remember where I work so yes. yeah I see them all okay. <laughs> yeah in so, your thoughts Did yeah you have if they're in the media and they're in L A County committing crime I see them yeah <laughs> yeah so <laughs> so y'all know all yeah did you so, have any uh, thoughts on that though um. About the fact that this happened in the care of her mother? Yeah. I mean, his mother? Yes. Well, there's a lot of thoughts. You know, how could, you know, a mother, we could have a whole show on that. I think um, I'm asking you because you also work in a facility of yeah. women. Yeah. And what you're, you know, what is that, what is the mindset that maybe you deal with that? Knowing that these are these, these are women, women that right. might be in your care mm -hmm. or um, that are in your care. Yeah. Well, I, I don't treat anybody any different. At the end of the day, we're, they're all a human. Everybody's yes. a human being. And um, I kind of guide myself by that. And I try to talk to the young deputies.
because people do they we get jaded and we and we take on you know we hear about a crime somebody committed and we feel as though incarceration is a place where you can treat people bad mm. and that's not it's that's not what that's not what we're set up for and we shouldn't be so I don't try to get caught up in you know oh what do they do when I'm dealing with them I like to know what kind of crime they did before I go if I have to go talk to them. And I only like to know that so I know what kind of who I'm going to bring that day. What what lieutenant am I going to bring? Am I going to bring, you know, the lieutenant, you know, from, you know, from the neighborhood to try to relate to him? Am I going to bring a lieutenant, you know, you know, from somewhere else? You know, that kind of thing. And mm-hmm. just to know what I'm dealing How with. How many so. different lieutenants are there's in the... There's a lot. Okay. There's a lot, you know. There's a lot of them. Because, I feel uh, that, that's yeah. consistent. Yeah, because there's, there's, you know, when you are at a level, at a management level, you're managing really people and personalities and stuff. So you have to meet people on the street sometime. That's what I, what I say. So um, that's only when I ask about the crime. That's what I want to know if you know if it's a if it's a petty crime or if it's a, a heinous crime. Because mm-hmm. in that. Also, let me know their attitude, their demeanor when when they're when they're when I'm dealing with them, mm-hmm. you know, and stuff. And that's what young deputies don't understand. You you gotta they just come to work. You gotta try to dig in, uh, into what these people are in there for to kind of sure. try to get them to conform to what we need them to do. Because a lot of problem is they they come in there, they don't commit a bad crime, you know, a, a crime, and um, they're angry, you know, because mm-hmm. they they got caught, they're in here, and their freedoms have been taken away from them. And, you know, so they want to act out. Act a lot out. of them are acting out. A lot of it's attention. A lot of them do have behavioral, actually, you know, mental yeah. mental illnesses and stuff. A lot of it is just behavioral. They're just bad. And they know that, and they... they <laughs> just bad. They're just bad, you know. They just need a whooping. Yeah. Right. Right, exactly. Um, And they act out. And if you're not used to dealing with people if, if you uh throughout your life, and a lot of these young deputies, they're young, they don't have life experiences and stuff. So you got somebody coming in there and, you know, kicking talking up. Crazy yeah, talking and, crazy. doing You know, right. acting ahead, you know. They just like, you know, probably like, oh, my God. So it takes somebody with experience mm-hmm. to, you know, come in sometime and uh, diffuse the situation. To... Not show them, just diffuse the situation because that's really what it's about. And you're trying to show them, you know, my experience, you know, you you see me doing something and hopefully you get something. And so mm-hmm. the next time you encounter something like this, you might be able to better be able to deal with it. Right. Um, better prepared. You know, on your own, better prepared and stuff. But, you know, um, you know, it's it's being in there. It's. um a whole different world. It's a whole different world, yeah. and, and it has a whole new world. yeah, uh, and a whole set of rules. Yeah, and it's something I don't talk about a lot. You know, like I used to tell people when I was young and when I deputy when I worked custody um, in the jail, I used to say I was in jail too. Mm-hmm. You know, I just went home on a on a furlough, but I came back the next yeah. day. You know, because I spent a lot of time there because you know you're there eight, sometimes ten, sixteen hours a day, right. and then if you work overtime, you're probably there more at that job than you are sometimes at, at, home. at home, you know, and stuff. So, and that's the only difference, you know. I can't, I don't get to go out and have lunch. Right. I, you know, I, I, I have to be in there with them. So right. it's not as, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's a great job, yeah. but yeah, it takes its toll on you. So for sure. Well, with that. um, I wanted to share uh, something else that uh, happened recently. Uh, my cousin passed and I got that call this morning and she came to my uh, Barnes and Noble uh, book signing Ooh. in Stockton not too okay. long ago. And we had chatted about her wanting to write uh, her own book. She is a biker, you know, biker mm. girls. Okay. They love their motorcycles. She lost her son not too long ago, but it's important to me to, um, cause I want to ask you, uh, about this question, you know, I have a lot of a large family. Mm-hmm. Death yes, happens do. often. Yes, it does. Um, I just came back you. from the Bay Area. My uncle had passed, and mm-hmm. the same side of the family. And now my cousin has passed. She had uh, sent me a text not too long ago that said, "Yeah, I just wanted to let you know when I was at the um, book signing that I had cancer and I wasn't telling anybody." Oh. So I want to oh, wow. first encourage you know all of our women out there to make sure that you're getting checked yes. and you're going to the doctor, and if you're struggling with something. Let somebody know. Let someone know that you have something you might need some support with. Uh, so once she told me, you know, we've been chatting it up and um, I know how difficult cancer treatment is. So it that felt good that we had, at least had to were able to have those conversations. But most importantly, I wanted to ask you because I think sometimes I get numb mm-hmm. and I'm wondering, is that a thing in mental health? Like, is there a point where if you deal with death too often or so often you get numb. I always wonder, you know, some um, passings I'm overwhelmed 
and completely devastated. And even when if was someone the last passed, that happened for you though, my uncle, what a month yeah. ago, a month ago, I it was heavy, uh-huh. and you know you fight your way out of that. Yeah, uh, and it 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 pulls you. You can feel it pulling at you, and mm-hmm. you know if you've dealt with it a lot, you continue to pull yourself out. But sometimes. Um, someone can pass that I've been close to and it just kind of just floats by. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know what that is. It, it makes me afraid a little bit that I'm becoming numb to death. Mm -hmm. Do people, is that a thing? Can people become numb to, um, death and mourning? Permanently? I I don't know. Are you worried about the permanently or just in this moment? I'm really asking for people that may feel this way Uh and not sure why there are some people that pass that they don't feel. You know, it's almost like if you don't feel um, overwhelmed, overwhelming grief, then something is wrong Mm -hmm. or something's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Um, And the answer to that is no, it's not anything wrong with you. Um, And it's funny that you speak about um, feeling numb because that's actually one of the first stages of grief is. And I pulled up the five stages of grief because I think that it's important for us to familiarize ourselves and see where we are um, in in grieving. Um, But the first is actually shock and denial. Um, And it says you will probably react to learning the loss Um, with numbed disbelief or just numbness. Um, You may deny the reality of the loss at some level or in order to avoid the pain. Shock provides emotional protection from being overwhelmed all at once. Um, So this may last for weeks. So that really speaks to exactly where Mm. you're suggesting you are and other people have been um, at the initial um, learning of a passing of a loved one. Mm -hmm. Um, But that... And I I think that we also should understand that stages of grief is not linear. So Mm. it's not something that, okay, you're going to go through shock and denial. Then you're going to go through pain and guilt. Then you're going to go through anger and bargaining. And then you're going to go through depression, reflection, loneliness. And then the fifth one, you know, once you get there, it's an upward turn. And then the reconstruction through working through, like, that's not how it looks. Mm. It looks, (coughs) the ebbs and flows, you may one minute be in the shock and the loss and then at the very next turn in the feelings of loneliness and depression or <clears throat> then you're like okay I can get through this and then something else happens and you find yourself back at stage one so mm. really understanding that it isn't linear and that you're not crazy or becoming numb at because it may be um not social socially um acceptable people are like well if you're like i didn't cry well, at my grandfather i mean at my grandmother that's maybe that's what i i guess maybe i don't know if that's what you what you meant by that but i kind of know what you're saying you're saying it numb but you're saying cuz most people when you hear about death or something tragic most people are very you get a, a lot of people get emotional, emotional about yes. it then you find yourself not really emotional about it you just like you know oh that happened and mm-hmm. and you and you kind of like going about doing your stuff, so you're thinking should not be feeling some some kind of way. So and I, would, I I go through that too with a lot of stuff, and I think it's I don't know if it's me years of you know doing you know my profession seeing mm-hmm. seeing bad things. I kind of like you know I don't. It's, it's just like oh, it's like another. It's it's just normal, you know. It's like okay, yeah. And I sometimes I say, God, Gia, you know, are you do you, did you lose your emotional gene or something? Right. Or, where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Because it. it's like, and then everybody, you know, you look and everybody's like, and I'm like, so I I get what you're saying. Because, Even with my grandparents, yeah, uh, my grandmother, and my grandfather, I was devastated with my grandfather. Mm-hmm. Like I, I for I'm years later, yeah, I still find myself trying to pick myself up. But with my grandmother, Maybe. it was very okay. This is what needs mm-hmm. to happen, right? Okay, and then next. And sometimes I think about her, and I'm fine. Mm-hmm. But if I think about my grandfather, I'm you, a you hot mess yeah. for a cool minute. Mm-hmm. So you know, I have cousins that I've been very close to. They pass. It's sad, but I still move forward, right? With nothing, right? Exactly. And I don't. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm almost like 
I don't like when I'm not feeling anything like I should be. Right. And that's because socially we are told that if we're not shedding tears or if we're not broken down and not able to get out of bed, then we don't really really care care about that. Right. And that's just not true, especially depending on, I mean, because there's a lot of different factors, what your relationship was like with this person, like with your grandfather you guys had a bond that was really special. Even you and Lady had a mm-hmm. really special bond as well. But it was and a different it bond. Looked yeah. Different. Yeah, it looked and, different. And, you know, what did you say all the things that you needed to say? Right. You know, were you in a place of acceptance? Were they sick for a long time? So there's all these different factors that lead into the feelings. Yeah. And yeah. we are looking about, or we're looking at it about an after. But if you've already said all the things you needed to say and have loved on them, well, then maybe you're not going to have the devastation. Yeah, or yeah. if you did love on them, you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's a it's no one's business how you grieve. I was asking for yeah. me. Well, I'm yeah. just, sometimes yeah. I need to do a self check and right. make sure that I'm all right. Yeah. Well, we should. Um, this, this is another we topic. Yeah. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. Forever. So stuff, with so. all that being said. All you ladies out there, men too, but from the <laughs> ladies out there, make sure you go yeah, get, get checked. checked. Make sure you're okay. Don't be afraid of the results. Sometimes we don't get checked because right. we're scared of what the results will be. Um, find out what's going on, get checked, and stay healthy and let someone know if you need some support. Uh, we will be right back with our amazing guest, Sid Stewart. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you for joining us again on My Morning Coffee. I want to introduce you guys to this amazing human being. Um, She is incredibly talented. She gives back to the world in a way that I wish many of us did. Um, And it would definitely be a better place. So let's introduce you to Sid Stewart. She will let you know what she does. And um, we got some good questions for you today, (laughs) ma'am. Okay. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, this is just dope. First of all, <laughs> um, it's women's month, but to be with, you know, some incredible women of color, I cannot even begin to tell you what this feels like. Um, so my name is Sid Stewart. I am a filmmaker. I'm a writer, um, poet, um, but I'm also a youth advocate. So I founded a nonprofit called Better Youth. Um, and, um, I work with, vulnerable youth as I describe mm. them to be. Um, so they're foster youth, former foster youth, transition age youth, homeless youth, and low-income youth. So I really focus on South LA um, and just basically mentoring and training young people um, and giving them a career pathway, mm. okay. but kind of developing life skills so that whatever they become, that you know our young people mm-hmm. know how to survive. Mm. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So I went to the press conference, and I want you to tell the people about that amazing oh collaboration uh, that just took place with your organization, Better Youth. Yes. So there was a press conference about two weeks ago, a week and a half. Um, so we just partnered with the Urban League. Yay. Which is awesome. An right incredible up the street. organization. Shout out to Carl and Brian. Um, 
But yeah, we we are doing some work with the LA County with LA County. Okay. And so there was like a round table. Shout out to Mia Johnson, yes, from Arts Mia. and Culture Department. Yes. I've been um, talking to her since since then. She's, she's amazing. Bomb dot com. Yes. Um so yeah, we sat at this round table and we were just saying, like, you know, there's always these um events or these diversity, inclusion mm-hmm. and equity mm-hmm. conversations mm-hmm. and they're swirling and not to disrespect anybody, but um I was like, Where's the action? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. we need to move like, after this meeting, what is the call to action, right. you know? Because at the end of the day, I'm a poet, I'm an activist, right? Mm-hmm. So I want to know, how is this needle going to be Move moved? Forward. Yeah. How is it going to help my young people, right? Like, we're having these conversations and everybody has jobs, but Jeremy, for real, is sleeping in his car. Right. So how do we move the needle? Right. And so um, hooked up with Carl, we started talking, he emailed me on Sunday. We had a week to kind of like get some kids enrolled in LACC. Okay. And that next Monday, we had six former foster youth enrolled in a yes. film class okay. at LACC. So I'm loving the fact that when people, they're putting their money where their mouth is, mm-hmm. you know? And not only a lot of people work with young people, but they don't understand what their needs are. Like you can help them and have all these wonderful opportunities for them. But if um, it's not sustainable, if it's not. not and how are they going to get there? Right. Right. We, we good know? at talking about, you know, where we come from, what we've been doing and to get where, where we are, the, the young people. But like you said, you're not giving them the tools they need for them to yeah. get to where they need to like be. Like a tap car. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah. a lift yeah. code. Yeah. Or a gas car for those that drive. Mm. And that was the first thing they, they, they thought about. And I've mm. worked with a lot of organizations. Um, yes, you have. That, you know, questionable. But, you know, in terms of like, <laughs> are they you centered? They just have it. Yeah, right. they have it. Or are they self-centered? Them. Yeah. Centered? Say it again. Say it again. Are they youth centric or self-centered? Right. Because there's checks and boxes and a lot of grant mm-hmm. money that goes to people. But yeah. at the end of the day, they parade these kids around. But, you know, after the press event, we went to Fat Daddy and, like, you know, around the corner and had to feed these kids because they were hungry. You know, and when the lights are off and all of that, that still goes on. Right. Um, So I love, you know, Urban League and Hillman Grad, which is Lena Waif's production Mm -hmm. company. Okay. um, The Grammy Foundation Museum. Um, so all those, and then shout out to Los Angeles Unified School District. We're partnered with them and Casa LA as well. Okay. Um, So some of the organizations that are really really helping young people. So listen, in the entertainment field, particularly in Los Angeles, it would have been a lot easier for you to just pursue your own dreams and um, aspirations without reaching back and helping others. In Mm -hmm. essence, you are almost holding yourself back trying to help other people. So how did you get to a point? Because selflessness out here is uh, in rare form. So what gave you the ability to say, I'm going to help these people while I'm also helping myself? Because you do still work. I've read some of your stuff, Mama. I you do. You do still work. So I got a book. Where, and... Yeah. How are you balancing all that? And what, um, you know, talk to us about that. So, you know, there's your will, right? And then, you know, depending on what you believe in, there's God's will. And sometimes, you know, there's my way and there's Yahweh. So, you know... I had to yield to, Mm -hmm. you know, my purpose. Like, there's Mm -hmm. a passion, and you can pursue that. Um, But at the end of the day, like, you know, I'm in covenant with God. So it's like I had to yield to him and what he wanted me to do. And, like, I didn't want to do that. Like, honestly, if truth be told, like, I remember in New York, somebody was like, oh, you should work with kids. I didn't even like kids. Mm. You know, at first, like, honestly, I was yeah. like, I don't want, I'm an artist. Like, right. I'm a poet. I don't like, got time for that. I don't got kids. I don't want nobody else's kids. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it was just like getting out here. There was something about make pursuing a life of make-believe when kids mm. and Watts were struggling, right? Like, I took a job at, at Jordan High School just so I could audition during the day, mm. right? If my brother was like, yeah, you should take this job. It's going to be easy. Mm-hmm. You know, it was lean on me. I was like, wait, this isn't easy. This is right. this is it's the school a... from the movie. Right. For real. Right. You know what I mean? And right. I didn't sign up for this. Right. I did not. Right. Not for this amount. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, I'm an actress. You know what right. I mean? Um, <laughs> like, this is like, not no, my craft. This is, you know, and I, I came out here to do me. But when I when I got on that campus mm-hmm. and I met Shakara and I met Brandon and I met Ruben and John A and like all these kids that needed just a light, little, yep. just somebody just a little to bit. point them mm-hmm. in the right direction, and somebody that the cares. Okay, mm-hmm. yes. Like, how can I not? That is me. Right. Mm-hmm. That 
that's me. So you discovered a piece of yourself in helping others. Absolutely. And then I was a little jacked up. Like I lived in New York. I left Ohio, graduated from school. I was going to go be a doctor. And I was broken because my father passed away, you know, so death is Mm -hmm. something that you deal with. Yeah. Um, And so I was science oriented. I got a degree in microbiology. And right out of college, I started writing poetry because it was was cathartic. And I was was the only thing that kept me alive. Honestly, Mm -hmm. like I moved to Atlanta. I stayed in a room for like a year with my uncle. And I just wrote, I just wrote poetry and I realized, oh, this is what's going to keep me alive. Like, this is my lifeline. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to move to New York. And like, I didn't have a job. I didn't have nothing. I had $300 and somebody just moved me up there. And I had contacted this lady. I had gone up there to visit one of my sorors. Mm -hmm. Um, And I talked to this, I convinced her like, listen, I'm going to come back and I'm going to make it. And I don't have a job. But I will do that when I get here. Mm-hmm. Then I have forgot my, my, my checkbook. I was like, but can I got twenty dollars though? Can I put that down on this apartment? Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> it's like, wow. you know, and she's like, her she name was, was Ann Valentine. I'll never forget. Right. She held the apartment for twenty dollars, girl. Go shout Ann. What's out her name? To Miss um, Ann. Ann Valentine was the realtor and Pia Wood, she was an attorney. All right. shout she was out a to sister. Them. Mm-hmm. And you know, she saw herself in me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like when we separate you know, you from me and me from you, and we right. see each other, right. then I couldn't leave. I couldn't leave them behind and right. go pursue something that right. was self-centered. Yeah. Um, and they're still with me, mm-hmm. you know, to the, they're listening now. Right. Like, you still are going to be on a podcast. Ah, right. I'm like, well, post right. that. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So you said you're sores. You you want to tell the people Ooh. what? To, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Delta Sigma Theta. Uh, so okay. listen, we just had the Long Beach Step Show out here on Saturday um, this past weekend. I didn't go, but I wanted to bring that up because there was a time when Black Greek Life was popping. popping. Yeah, popping. and now it's not. Ooh. Really? Not in California. Have you seen it? I have not. Right. I must say, I we used not. to go to, someone did a list recently of all the step shows that used to happen in California. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And it was almost like every weekend, every other weekend, at least Like once definitely a month, in the spring. We were road yeah. Yeah. Um to, to Fresno, Chico, to, to, Chico, Fresno yep. to, to Davis, to San Jose State, yep. to San Diego State. That's true. Um, Northridge, UCLA, USC, and Long, and Long Beach. We had step shows almost every weekend out here and it doesn't happen anymore. So I want to get your thoughts on what we can do, particularly because you deal with youth and now mm-hmm. youth and we're getting them into higher education. Mm-hmm. What can we do as a culture to reestablish um, the prominence and importance of black Greek culture? I think it's history, right? I think a lot of our young people are just disconnected from history. I mean, even hip hop. It's like yeah. Tupac. And they're like, who? I'm yeah. like, <laughs> Okay, let's start. Let's start the, here. You know what I mean, right. and then like bring it back. But I think connecting them, connecting them to history, the importance of Greek letter organizations, why they came into being. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we talk about diversity, equity, inclusion. That's like a long motif in the history of African American people. You know, and how we've had to formulate our own opportunities you know we talk about oscar so wide and why naacp is important but why are those how did they even come to be right because mm-hmm. we were ostracized on these campuses and we are people that create our own right you know we we so why you know it's a sisterhood that's yeah. what it's about sisterhood mm-hmm. yeah. and brotherhood and it doesn't matter about the letters right right because this is my sister right we're Absolutely. in two different organizations mm-hmm. but collectively right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we might have you know you wear a head wrap mm-hmm. i wear braids this just has natural hair but at the same time we're all still one mm-hmm. right you know and it's like these young people are just completely completely just disconnected from yesterday but it's not like they're immune to yeah. learning it's right. just our responsibility right how are we passing so we're happens. lacking and and i also mm-hmm. think that with diversity and inclusion where they have been really beautiful things to support um, the integration of everyone. It has made us um, believe that things that we've had on our own aren't as valuable anymore. Um, And I think that also needs to, we need to find a balance between diversity, inclusion, integration, um, and understanding the importance of that as well as recognizing how valuable the things that we've done on our own have been as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally agree. Thoughts, Ms. Gia? Um, 
Well, I'm just looking at some of the stuff um, in the background. <laughs> you you are amazing. You you Thank you. you you have some some gifts, and I I want to talk to you about. I see that you performed with my Dr. Maya Angelou I and sure Cicely did. Tyson uh, Tyson sure before. What was that like? Tell the people what that was like. Well, which version do y'all want? Y'all want the... <laughs> we want we want the, we want the sister <laughs> version. we want the sister version. You know mm. you know how this. We... Okay, so that's love... a, that's going to be a good story. Anytime something <laughs> yeah, starts with okay. okay, so what happened was yep. yeah. Um, so Dr. Angelou um, is like. My favorite, okay. you know, and I studied her work and um, I had a mentor that said, oh, we're going to produce the show. We're going to put you on. And so I remember being on stage with her sitting like this and she was about to go on stage. And, you know, I'm from the hip hop generation. I love hip hop. That's what I grew up in mm-hmm. that. And um, I'm like, oh, Dr. Angela, I'm about to rock your joint. And she clutched her pearls like, <laughs> what? Rock what? I was like, Ooh. Oh. oh, like, and she just was like. Ooh. You know, and she walked out on the stage and, you know, did her thing. And I was just crushed. Uh-huh. Right. Just crushed. Okay. Like, that oh, sounds like man. an Oprah moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but she turned it around. So we go out and I, I just was like, well, wow, I love your work. You know, you got to learn to separate like the artist. Yeah, you, but from, I'm about to do this, huh? I rocked her joint. And, um, <laughs> I had woven in like a lot of her work. So she understood that. You I'm were a literary. Student. Like I'm a literary. I, you know, you are a student. I'm absolutely, a student and you take it seriously. Right. Absolutely, right? Like, okay. I know who you. Real are. recognize, yeah. real in that moment. Absolutely. Right. So, and I have this on tape. She, um, she heard it, and then when she came out, we were crossing each other on the stage, and so I was just like, "Oh, this lady about to uh-huh. hit me with her cane," <laughs> like you know, right. Right. and um, she just held her arms open uh-huh. like an apology like okay. I'm sorry you know uh-huh. like sometimes we we don't give a young people or younger people mm-hmm. the credit you know mm-hmm. like I know it, who we you dismiss are. yeah I you know what I'm saying I, I ride up on the elevator because of you mm-hmm. um, so she definitely gave me some love and then okay. Miss Tyson, she um, was like a mama. Uh So she came over through Ellis Island, like her people Mm -hmm. came over. So I was filming a movie for HBO at the time. And I was like, well, I can't be at work. I got to go. She had invited me. And um, her her love was so strong, it scared me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like she sat me down at a table Mm -hmm. and just like schooled me about, you know, at the time I was pursuing acting and just everything the love that she gave me at the time was so difficult to receive mm. because of my own my relationship with my own mother mm-hmm. um it was just so pure and powerful that mm-hmm. it was like scared you i would i, I was scared like you. i gotta go mm-hmm. almost cried. like i can't stay here anymore. Yeah, like i had lot. to leave ellis mm-hmm. island mm-hmm. and i regret that that i wasn't in that moment to like receive it but mm-hmm. but she gave you exactly what you needed at that moment more but listen that's more. probably a lot of what our young people go through when they encounter some of us, mm-hmm. right? It's true. I've it's seen true. them with you. And it's many true. times mm. mentoring when we do it from a uh, earnest, a very authentic place, if they've never received that before, sometimes it can be a it's little jolting. jolting. And, true. you know, and we might lose them. So how do you, and I'm sure you've come across that, you know, make sure that you they know, especially if they've come from a background where they didn't have, they've probably had some disingenuous uh, help before. Most of it is right. Been. So how do we get across to them, um, especially with the work that you're doing, that this is coming from an earnest uh, place that, you know, I really do care, not just I'm providing the service. Because you are, you're providing a service to be able to help them cross that bridge. But sometimes they're looked at as a commodity to get the spotlight or the sure. accolades. Sure. So how do we go about letting them know, even in, in our sororities, you know, we do community service. We're really here because we care. We're really here because I could be somewhere else. That's We're right. really here because you are our future. What That's are right. you, the steps that you are taking to let them know in your organization that, um, you know, this is this is authentic. This is this is 100 that's a good question. I just thank you for that revelation of why what what happened to me. I think um, consistency is key. Um, and, you know, young people say keeping it real, keeping it 100. But I think, you know, they read you, mm-hmm. right? They'll read me before they read my book. Man. Mm-hmm. Um, so I Especially think when there's been trauma. You learn really quickly how to differentiate the, the good from not. Quickly. Mm-hmm. They're very sharp. And they, you know. 
they recognize. So I think it's important just to be your authentic self, like you said, be consistent and um, they'll test you. You know, they'll, they'll definitely try you because my kids are from Watson. <laughs> like, it's not they're like when I got there, they're like, this is Lady, Cosby right. kid. Lady. Like, what? <laughs> Um, but I got hood in me too. So, you know, but you know, <laughs> I was validated, but I think at the end of the day, you have to wrap your arms around these young people and never let go. I don't care what it is. I will never let you go mm-hmm. because that's what love looks like. You know, it's unconditional. I don't care what you do. I'm going to be here. I'm going to never let you go. And I think when they realize that and they're struggling and they're tussling and they're doing all the things that love, that's a bond that, you know, it, it, and it, and it goes beyond providing a service, right? Because mm. I'm, I'm I'm providing something from my heart, right. from my soul. Right. It has nothing to do with better you. Some kids, I kicked out of better you. Okay. But they still are texting me or DMing me. Miss Stewart, can you pray for me? Because I, I, I just went to my mom's funeral. This chick, you know, she lives in Las Vegas. It's just, they know love. I know we've been, we've been talking about your, your mentoring with the kids and stuff. But real quick, because we're running out of time. I want you to talk about. I see you you're coming up. You're going. You're shooting a short film, I so am. in in March. Ooh. Can you talk about real quick a little bit about that? Because I yeah. think that's a topic that um that's been in the media a lot and um in your book and um that's happening. You know um yeah. today. So can you um, yeah. share? So a little my bit? short film is called Butterfly Queen. Um, it's based on a relationship I have with my brother from another mother who is transitioning from you know um male to female Mm -hmm. um and it just talks about you know it's just two of my young people are playing it but it's just again it's based on love and we're diametrically opposed in our beliefs but at the end of the day Mm -hmm. it's love that keeps us together it's love that's acceptance um so i'm really excited about it um you should be because that's something that we need to talk about more especially in our community um it's 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 happening more it's been happening but it just has been in the dark but now you know it's out in the the light and stuff so and you know it's you know it's love Mm -hmm. we're past judgment Mm -hmm. past anything you know we all need acceptance and to belong Mm -hmm. you know and yep so shout out to my brother for his for his courage very well, good. Tell us about your book. My book is called Babylon Graffiti. Hey. It's on my website, okay. um, dot com, And it just, you know, a lot of stuff of just being um, a purveyor and surveyor mm-hmm. of the world and people and just, you know, the power of words. And then um, just the world we live in, you know, all the rhetoric, you know, it could be graffiti um, to a certain degree. Um but yeah, I love poetry and want to short, shoot this short film. I'm working on a feature film. Um, talking to a major streaming platform right now about um, it's a sci fi. Okay. So I know a lot of things, you know, they don't expect from us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have okay. to constantly right. Right. reshape okay. the narrative. I love okay. that. So let the people know where they can get in touch with you if they want to help, if they want to follow you oh, and yes. be your new biggest fan. Yes. So betteryouth.org is the organizational uh, website, and I'm on Instagram, at Sid Stewart, so S-Y-D-S-T-E-W-O-R-D, on Instagram, Twitter, mm-hmm. and Facebook. Mm-hmm. So, yes, we're looking for mentors um, to help um, usher these young people into the next millennia. I love that. So what's going on with you, Miss Sarita? Do you want to let the people know where they can find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram um, at Sarita B M F T. Uh, and nothing really up next. I'm just going, just doing the caretaker thing, going back and forth, um, and continuing to see clients, mm-hmm. which I may actually take a break from because it's, uh, it's, uh, <coughs> it's starting to wear on me a little bit. Mm-hmm. I also think I'm going to take a silent meditation retreat mm-hmm. in the next mm-hmm. month or so. Not bad. Just need some silence. Miss Gia? Oh, you guys can find me on Facebook and Instagram at The Mahogany Box. And I want to take a moment right now, since it's March is uh, Women's Month, just to shout out sisters to the sisters out there. You know, sisters, let's empower each other, okay, and support each other in whatever we're doing. All right. You can always find me at PR Biz Mom on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. I've been having some pretty cool, entertaining, and uh, hilarious uh, back and forth uh, regarding the election. So, you know, if you you need a little, want to mix it up a little bit, 
Uh, make sure you follow me. Uh, also, with Beeper, it's Black Public Relations Society <coughs> of Los Angeles. We have some pretty dope events coming up. So make sure you follow um, follow that page. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, and I will definitely keep you posted. We want to make sure that you know that you can always find our amazing products on my mahogany shopthemahoganybox.com. And, you know, subscribe. Follow us on My Morning Coffee Podcast. And until next time, um, we'll see you soon. Take care. Into